Hello, and welcome to the ConnectIQ Tools and Performance Breakout. I'm Nicholas Kral, the ConnectIQ Product Manager. In this session, we are going to go over some of the new tools introduced with System 5 and how to use them to make your apps better, faster, and stronger. Let's start with the Visual Studio Code extension for Monkey C. We announced the extension last year at GDVC, and since then, thousands of you have tried it out and provided feedback. With our latest version, it is now the default development environment for ConnectIQ. Let's take it for a spin. Before you begin, you need ConnectIQ SDK 4.06 or above. To get the latest SDK, you can download the SDK manager from developer.garmin.com slash ConnectIQ. After you install Visual Studio, you can install the Monkey C extension by Garmin from the extension marketplace. Let's walk through creating a new project. First, from the command palette, Control shift p on Windows and Linux, Command shift p on Mac, type New Project and select Monkey C New Project. You'll need to set the project name, app type, minimum API level, and some further steps. When your new project is created, in the Run and Debug view, click on Create a Launch JSON File. Select your project and Monkey C. For the rest of this video, we are going to discuss a speed zone data field. Our speed zone data field is a simple data field that will categorize the user by how fast they are going from stop to sprinting. Because as we all know, users love it when technology judges them. It displays a string summary in the data field as well as records your zone in the activity file. Let me quickly walk you through this data field. We have two instance variables. The first one is for recording zone information, and the second is for tracking if the activity is active. After the type definitions, we have our initializer, which loads the resources and initializes the developer field. Our compute function takes the current speed and places the user into a zone, then updates the display string and records the information. Now I'm going to set a breakpoint in the compute method and start debugging by hitting F5. Once we hit our breakpoint, we can hover over locals to see their values. We can also look at the call stack and variables in the run and debug view. Let's step into get zone string. This function retrieves the user string based on what zone the user is in. Now, let's move our breakpoint to where the user is moving. Of course, to trigger that, we need to actually simulate motion. So let me load in one of my recent workouts. Bringing up the simulator, I'll go into Simulation Activity Data. As you can see, we have a new interface for playing back fit files. Now I know that in this workout, I may have taken a little time to get up to speed, so I'm going to fast forward four minutes and start simulation here. In our Speed Zone app, we want to give the user the option to choose what information they want to record. Let me take you through some of the new possibilities with our new, improved app setting system. Our new App Settings Editor can be launched from the simulator from the File menu. The updated App Settings system supports a new grouping feature that lets you join multiple settings together. You can also set the visibility of a group to a Boolean so optional settings can vanish. We also have added a new List feature that will allow you to have a global list of options within your settings. The new settings feature uses a common backend to reduce behavior differences between editing settings on various Garmin clients. We have a new debugger. We have new settings. Now let's look at the new profiler for ConnectIQ. Right now we are simulating our data field. From the file menu, we can launch the profiler. While our app is running, we can hit the start button and wait a few seconds to let it capture some data. Once 
Once we have a representative sample, we can stop our capture to analyze the results. We only captured one call stack for our compute function, but we seem to be spending a lot of time in git zone string. What is going on? It looks like the git zone string is calling load resource on every compute cycle. Load resource is hitting the file system to get our translated string. Since there is no chance the string translations will change between updates, let's cache the string translations in our initializer and just return the cached version in git zone string. First, let's define an instance variable to hold our cached values. Now let's cache the values in the constructor. Now instead of loading each time, we can fetch them from the cache. Now when we run, we get much better performance. Here are some tips for better performance in your apps. Avoid any resource access in functions like onUpdate and Compute. Try to load necessary information in your constructor when possible. Getting the system settings can be deceptively slow, so try to get any necessary settings in your initializer as well. When implementing a layout, Cache your drawables by finding them in on layout after setting the layout. These are just a few of the features of System 5. You can get the beta SDK from the SDK manager. There are new device APIs for getting body battery, stress, VO2 max, and other values. You can try these out by getting the Phoenix 6 System 5 beta device or the Venue 2 System 5 beta device from the SDK manager. We look forward to you trying it out and giving us feedback. Thanks for watching.